everyone today we are in a honda euro r and we've got a problem with the screen up here at the top so i'll show you this is the new tap design that the um they ran from 2003 onwards if i'm not mistaken right up to about 2007 for the accords so basically your climate controls are here and uh, you can't really see it on here apart from the blower speed the actual display is just up here so the problem is switch it on notice now it's not working you can't see anything if you tap it sometimes it'll work but now it doesn't want to work so for example the speed of the blowers are here I could turn that down but for the temperature control it's actually up here so if it's got the dual climate zone here so I actually do not know what temperature I'm at because of this here at the top I'll try it again So the light comes on and off, but anyway, um, what we'll do is we'll open up this dash and we'll actually see what's wrong at the top there. Because obviously if you're hitting it, there could be either a problem with the circuit board or there could be a, a connection issue there. So we'll double check that now. So just to recap, if your only job in a Honda Accord is to fix that display at the top or replace it, you don't have to pull out any of this. All you have to do is just see these clips here. With the plastic removal tool, just gently pop it in here, pop it in here, and just pull this out. This whole thing will just pull out. But like I said, because we're doing some other work and checking the wiring, we've pulled out everything. So I thought it would be good, a good opportunity to show you both ways of how to attend to the top display, should you need to do any work there. So I've got my set of plastic trim removal tools. You'll need this for this job. So if you want to remove the whole center console and get to everything, remove the gear shifters around. All you do is just pop this off. It just clips all around. And you pop that off. There's a couple of screws here. You take that off and we'll pull out the ashtray. And then you can pull this trim off. Someone's been here previously and they've actually cracked the trim. So if you encounter this issue, then you don't actually have to pull out the whole trim because then it gives you the access to this whole control system over here. So when you pull that out, there's normally another screw there, which is missing, and one there, that has to be taken out. Then you just have to pull out the electrical connector, and you can pull this whole tray out. To take it to a professional, if you do not know what you're doing. Or at least do some research, as you probably are now by watching this video. This prevents mistakes like this. I like to keep a little container there, organize the screws. So we'll go ahead and open those two and then we'll pull out that trim. This is also the same method if you wanted to change the steer. If you wanted to install the stereo system into this um, Honda, that just pulls out. So see the clips there, and 
this crew monster. Now that that's removed, we'll move on to the next step of taking this out. And I believe there's a couple of screws that are underneath here, which I'll show you, that hold this in place. So now after taking out that bracket, now you can see the two tenement heads. So the tenement bolt heads here, there, and there at the bottom. Again, someone's been in there. It's missing one there, so take all the rest out and then we'll pull this whole unit off okay now that we got all those bolts removed and then nut this unit just pulls up it's a bit tight in here we'll have to actually just pull the plastic a bit it's a bit hard to do it one-handed but you just pull on either side that'll come off so I'll do that off camera and we'll move on to the next step so if anyone wants reference there's quite a few plugs on this system if you've got the premium audio system the black plugs go at the bottom everything's color-coded so you shouldn't have too much of a problem but it'll be a good opportunity if you still have the factory unit to replace it at this point it's a lot of weight to the system that we got that out of the way Moving on to this section, to take this off, we have to come underneath here, and a bit hard to see, but it's basically that one there, and this one's missing one, yeah, so someone has been here, so there's normally two, one there and one there. Well, one's missing, so we'll take that one out and we'll pull out the top unit. So this is the bolt. It's just an 8mm head. So if you have a small toolkit like this, very easy to work on any car. So that's just the 8mm that goes underneath there. You will have two of them if your vehicle's never been touched. At this point you should be able to put your plastic removal tool in there and clip off this whole center console. Yeah, so this one comes off here. This one comes off here. I mean I could have taken that off directly at the top but we're getting to the head unit and just checking all the wiring at the back here, so just depends what you're after. Okay, so this one's out of the way now, and we'll take this on a bench and have a look and see what's wrong with that top, and I'll report back to you. For reference, this is what it looks like. You've got your hazard light switch here, which you have to disconnect, and that top climate control display system there, and that green plug. Now we're separated that display from the dash so we'll have a look now and see so where the problem so I think the problem might lie with the connector itself so now you can see it's working but by moving, by moving up and down, it's going off and on. It leads me to believe that it might be disconnected. Anyway, I'll report back off camera. Yeah, this is definitely the connector. Yeah, this is the connect connection at the back. So either a dry solder on the actual circuit board, or it'll be part of this wiring system. I'll um, investigate it further off camera because it's a bit hard to do it one handed and I will let you know what the problem is. So to open up this little display unit, what we have to do is actually pop these clips off here, here, there and there and we can investigate the actual circuit board. So most garages won't really bother fixing this, um, only a specialist or someone who works in Honda's wood um, most people will replace this whole unit which in my opinion is a waste 
you're just creating more waste for the environment but um anyway uh hopefully by making this video someone will be able to save their own display yeah so we'll continue on we'll open this up and we'll move on to the next step what to do is get the plastic removal tool in there and with a little screwdriver just slowly pop these clips off i'll show you briefly put this in here see how it just popped there so the bottom has popped and we have to repeat it repeat the same procedure on the top here when you pop all those clips off and the back comes off be careful not to touch the PCB with bare hands use gloves or an anti-static strap onto yourself but yeah that's the innards of the display unit um, might have to open it up a bit further and just see the connection on the connector I'll try and show you this hopefully you can see it if you look at these solder joints here there's a couple of dried solder joints on the actual um, connector so that will be causing the intermittent fault of it coming on and off when you tap it I'll open it up a bit more can you see that first track over there see how it's lifted up so that needs to have that's that needs to be reflowed with solder so the actual way you're supposed to do this or how Honda assemble it is they put the display in first and then this PCB is soldered onto each of those pins there So what I'm going to try and do is put the plastic tool in here and, and try and rework that all those connectors and reflow solder onto them. So hopefully that stops the bad um, connection or the dry connection. And now after reworking that solder, I shake it and do hit the jack at the back. It's perfect. So it was just that dry joint on either side of the connector, each pin, one this side and one that side, so that was damaged. More than likely this is due to the vibrations and just the age of the parts, so kind of expected. Anyway, I hope this video was of some help to you. If it was, please like and subscribe. There'll be a few more videos coming up on this car, so subscribe and stay tuned. And also... The um, motorhome series reviews there's a few more um, coming as well so stay tuned for all of that and like i said please like and subscribe thanks for watching everyone see ya to reassemble the dash it's just reverse of removal and like i said earlier a good point to get rid of that old stereo system and put in a new system the obsolete dvds no one watches anymore